The Titans beat the Colts in week seven, moving to five and two on the season. And it wasn't a very good offensive performance, but that should be expected given how limited they are with their receiver and offensive line personnel. Credit to Mike Vrabel for consistently elevating the talent that he has available. I'm giving Ryan Tannehill another C plus for this game. They just aren't asking him to make very many difficult throws because they know that the offensive line can't hold up for a five-step drop and they don't have receivers that consistently beat man coverage. And Mike Vrabel mentioned this a couple times in his press conference, but this is just the way that the Titans are going to have to win until they get healthy at least. Derrick Henry had 128 yards on 30 carries, 3.73 yards after contact per attempt. Overall, it was a solid performance, but there were a few runs that he could have broken off for big touchdowns if he could have powered through some arm tackles. The receivers were barely used at all in the passing game, so there isn't really much to talk about with them, but I thought all three of the Titans' tight ends had outstanding games. Austin Hooper made his first real contribution of the season with a couple incredible catches. If the play that I'm showing right now looks familiar, it's because the Titans ran this on their first play of the game in week 7 of 2019, which was Ryan Tannehill's first start for the Titans. The Chargers were in three week just like the Colts are. Ryan Tannehill throws an identical pass to number 81 with number 85 trailing behind him. There's just a ton of crazy similarities about this play. But Jeff Swain was arguably the Titans' best offensive player on the field last Sunday. He's usually what I would describe as a capable blocker, but he was dominant against the Colts. I charted him with five big time run blocks in this game, and his ability to consistently win his block on the edge set up a lot of Derrick Henry's biggest runs. And Chigakonkwa wasn't really involved as a receiver, but he also had a great run blocking performance. He's shown steady improvement in the run game on a week to week basis. There's a lot to talk about with the offensive line. We'll just go left to right. Let me know if you want me to break down Dennis Daly every week, but I don't think that you do. This wasn't his worst performance of the season, but it was still bad. There just isn't any element of his game that you can really hang your hat on. Compared with Aaron Brewer, for example, he'll have two or three borderline disastrous pass blocking reps each game, but you can still justify it in your head because he gives you value as a run blocker and his technique is actually really underrated. But Dennis Daly just lacks redeeming qualities as an offensive tackle. Trading for Dennis Daly is one of the three moves that John Robinson's made that just really makes me question his judgment. The other two are trading up for Des Fitzpatrick and giving Vic Beasley 10 million guaranteed. John Robinson has proven himself to be a competent GM at the minimum, but when moves like this start to stack up, it makes me question my evaluation of him. Aaron Brewer is kind of like Malik Willis as a draft prospect. I said back in March, I could make a cut up of Malik Willis's 20 best plays and convince you that he should be the number one overall pick, or I could make a cut up of his 20 worst plays and convince you that Liberty should have benched him. I could do the same thing with Aaron Brewer. He can do things athletically that very few offensive linemen in the NFL can do, but it's almost a guaranteed two or three pressures that he gives up each game, and they're usually really bad losses where he gets completely overpowered. He is a player that I think the Titans should continue to invest in moving forward because he has a lot of upside and he could potentially be a replacement for Ben Jones at center. I had no idea how to grade Ben Jones in this game because objectively he didn't play well. But given the context and the fact that he had a stomach bug and was playing through it, I'm gonna give him a B. He was the leading push that moved the pile on this Derrick Henry run to ice the game. So shout out to Ben Jones, one of the more underrated players across the league. Dylan Radins had the best performance of his career. This was the first time I've watched him play against high caliber NFL competition where he was legitimately going punch for punch at least. His run blocking has been a major disappointment so far, but he was doing a good job getting his hands inside and actually creating some movement. But he still has a few major issues that show up every single time that he plays. Number one, he has terrible balance especially for someone that tested as well as he did in the three cone and short shuttle. And even going back to his North Dakota State tape, obviously the competition wasn't good, but you can still evaluate the movement skills. And he was a really effective zone blocker back in college, but he just ends up on the ground way too often. He also isn't very good at sustaining blocks. He has a habit of stopping his feet when he makes contact with the defender. And those are technique issues that he put on tape in his first preseason game, and they remain issues today. And then like a lot of offensive linemen, there's still way too many men mental errors. Right here, he doesn't pick up this stunt and Ryan Tannehill gets pressured. If I was the defensive coordinator facing Tennessee, I would be sending stunts constantly to the right side of their line. And then Nicholas petit Friere had a really good game outside of this one play where his footwork gets a little bit sloppy and he gets pushed back into Ryan Tannehill who gets injured on the play. 
The defense played much better than the offense. You see a lot more green on this one. Jeffrey Simmons was relatively quiet rushing the passer, but he had one of the most dominant reps that I've ever seen in run defense against Quentin Nelson right here. And then Tier Tart is fully having a breakout season. He had four pressures in this game. His career high for a single game was two. This is another elite rep against Quentin Nelson. He gets into the bull rush and then just uproots him with this inside arm and gets to the quarterback. Tier Tart has the traits to develop into a somewhat effective pass rusher which is a huge plus from a nose tackle so great job by john robinson to get him as a udfa mario edwards has been a really solid contributor off the edge it's interesting when you compare tennessee's defensive front from this year to last year without harold landry and ola adani the titans have so much more size on the edge and so the pass rush is a little less explosive but the run defense has definitely benefited David Long's having a great season. His interception was kind of gifted to him, but I was really impressed with some of the pass rushing moves that he was putting on Jonathan Taylor. I've seen him use this swim move a lot when he's evading blocks and run defense, but with Tennessee blitzing more this season, he's putting his block shedding skills to use and applying a lot of pressure to the quarterback. He ranks third among off-ball linebackers with 11 pressures this season, and he's just a linebacker that provides value in every phase of the game. Before we get into the secondary, I gotta mention Shane Bowen. I thought he called an outstanding game, and when you look at the coverage splits, it doesn't look like anything special, cover one, cover three. I've just never seen the Titans defense be that exotic in terms of coverage disguises. Shane Bowen has always rotated his safeties pretty frequently, but against the Colts, unless they were playing just straight up man, they were disguising literally everything, and then they were sending a lot of well-designed pressures underneath that. So Matt Ryan was having to think for an extra second to identify the coverage rotations, and that gave the pass rush more time to get home. Individually, the best performance goes to Andrew Adams. Obviously he had this pick six, but he's been a really secure tackler and underneath zone coverage. And I don't hate the idea of him being the third safety going forward. Kevin Byard wasn't targeted, but he was really solid in coverage. Roger McCreary has had a rocky start to his rookie season, but like I've said, it's not really something you can be that critical of him for because he's learning a new position. And he had his best game by far in week seven. Great timing to break up this pass on Alec Pierce. And then Terrence Mitchell has had two really good games in a row. The pass coverage is still nowhere close to where it needs to be. And I mean, he was targeted three times, three receptions for 34 yards. Even this forced fumble, he got beat earlier in the play. So he's still someone that I would be looking to get out of the lineup. But I'm starting to warm up to Terrence Mitchell as a depth piece. Hopefully this game helps him build up some more confidence. I imagine getting mossed five times per game probably isn't great for that. But overall, I think you've got to feel pretty good about the Titans secondary. They don't seem to be getting any sort of relief from the injury luck they had last season. But the secondary is actually getting healthy for the most part. And so you're starting to see the Titans defense live up to their preseason expectations. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments any grades that you disagree with.